I have been talking non-stop for this whole broadcast and no one's been able to hear me. I'm sorry about that. Um, that's annoying. Okay, so I've basically just made this Skinner blend. Um, and what I'm going to be using now is just a little brass tube. It's about a centimeter in diameter to thank you for pointing out the no sound pronto that some sorry about that uh, I'm just going to cut some circles from this sheet of clay so this is this has been rolled through on my thinnest setting on my pasta machine after making the blend and we'll make some of these um, little ombre roses Here we go. So I'm actually just going to do all along here. So if there was anything that I have done um, for the first part of this video that was muted, um, that you want me to re-explain, um, just please pop it in the comments and I will be happy to do that. Okay, so each one of these rows will be one one rows. So um, as you can see, you know this wasn't even the entire blend. So there's the other half of it. So um, you know there will be there will be heaps of um, roses that you can make out of this one blend. Try and get my circles out here. So all of my Skinner blends in this, um, with this technique, the curved edges, I have them, I'm currently working on putting them into an ebook, or ebooks, um, and they will go onto Etsy. So if you are interested in any of them in particular, just send me a message. I'll give you more details. Really, where did it go? Here it is. You don't know. So I will start, um, it doesn't matter which side of the blend you start on um, for making this effect. If you want the light part on the inside then you obviously start with the light part of the blend. Or if you want the dark side on the inside you start with the dark side. I mean it's pretty, um, it's not rocket science otherwise I wouldn't do it. So. I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to squish it in my fingers. So I'm sort of making it into an oblong, overly type shape. And then I'm just going to grab some scrap clay. Now you won't see this in the finished product, so it really doesn't matter what color it is. I happen to have some black on my table, so. So I've just rolled that into 
a cone. Just a little ice cream cone shape. And this will actually be the center of the rose. So, pick up our little petal. By now it should be super, super thin. Um, the thinner it is, the more petal-like it will look. So if it's quite thick, it can look quite, I don't know, I guess artificial, but. <laughs> And I've just wrapped that around the little cone. So it's still in a cone shape. Um, and I'll just keep adding the petals around and around and around until I get to the last one. And it really is just that simple. So again, I'm just squishing this and stretching it out into a little um, petal shape and I'm wrapping it so the pointy part of the cone is obviously the top of the rose or the the bud of the rose but of course way too dark for you to see I might do the pale one next So I generally go for between um, 10 and 13 petals per flower. Um, but really it's up to you how many you put in there. Um, if you feel like your rose is big enough or if you want to just make a little bud or whatever the case may be, you know. You stop when you feel you've got enough. Okay. So I am just wrapping it one petal at a time. You get faster with practice. I haven't made any of these in a while, which is why it's taking me so long tonight. But, I mean, the, the rose petals are pretty forgiving. You don't have to be super exact and you don't need to make them all precisely the same thing. A good idea is to look at um, just do an internet search or a Google image search of actual roses and just um, pay attention to how the petals um, look how they wrap around one another the sort of spiraling um, way that they seem to come you know it seems to go in a spiral so it's not um, they're not as symmetrical as say a sunflower with them all lined perfectly So what I'm doing um, as it gets a bit bigger is I'm taking the edge of the petal and just curling it around um, to make it a little bit more realistic. All of these things you can play with. I mean, these ones don't have that curl at all and they're still gorgeous. Um, Whereas these ones are a little, apart from the color, obviously, they're a little bit more realistic, but um, they also take a bit more time and a bit more effort. Okay, so still just squishing these little circles and wrapping it around. That's, this is number eight in this particular flower, so there's obviously a lot more than just 13. 
end up here. Okay, there's really no way to do this faster that I know of. Um, you know, you if you're doing it uh, rows like this, you really have to do them one by one so that you can see if I can get this camera to focus. You really have to um, uh, shape the petals individually. You can't you can't rush it. You can't wrap three or four at the same time. Not in my um, experience anyway. So again, I'm just curling around the top edge of the petal to make it a bit more realistic looking. Of course, again, apart from the color. The further away from the center I get, I tend to um, put more of a curl to the top of the petal to make it appear as if the rose is actually blossoming. But if you prefer a tighter bud, you know. All of this is subject to your personal whims. No one's going to tell you how to make your art. Okay, so you get the idea. It's really rinse and repeat. It's not um, not too technical, too complicated. I don't mind fingerprints on my flower petals, but um, you know some people don't like it. If you don't mind it, then don't worry about that. But um, if you want to try and avoid fingerprints on the little petals, then um, you can either wear latex gloves or you can try and uh, let's see. Can you focus, please? You can try and use some cornstarch on your fingers. So you can see it's looking quite rosy. All I'm doing is literally just squishing this. here and this is how I curl it I literally just pull it down and that's all there is to it
Okay, so, um, these will probably be earrings um, when I'm done with them. So, um, I will just flatten this before I bake it. So, I've just taken, you know, a thin slice off of the back of that so that it, it stands flat so I can bake it a bit more um, easily. Okay. I'll start with the, this time I'll start with the lighter side of my blend. What I do when I make these roses is I'll use these little cutoff bits for the next one's little inside cone. So again, this really isn't seen. So it doesn't matter that it's not a solid color or that it's darker than the petals or anything. It's just um, it's just for structure. You can probably see a bit clearer with the paler clay. I've just wrapped that around there. For those of you watching, would you rather see a sunflower or an orchid? Because I think we can probably fit in one more flower for this part of the um, broadcast. Um, and then in the but just having fun one, I can do a few of the other flowers. I have one that I haven't made before, so it might be a disaster, so I'll leave that for then. Do any of you have a preference?
Okay, I think we have one vote for sunflower there, so do some sunflowers. can get really tedious if you're not in the mood for it. I usually um, put on some Netflix and, or some music and just, because this is so mindless, you know, you can watch a movie while you're doing this or listen to some music or whatever. And there you have it. So again, I'm just going to chop off the bottom.
pop that out the way. Right, sunflowers. So because I like to have um, blends in everything I do, I have a yellow and orange blend for the sunflower petals. I'll just do the blend again. Um, seeing as my mic was muted, I'll explain again. Um, Skinner Blends basically is just a gradient like we had here with a, um, a single piece of clay with the color fading from one into another. Um, so this is achieved by mixing um, decreasing amounts of color with other colors. I don't know if that made sense. It made sense in my head. Um, generally, um, or the most common way to do Skinner blends is with triangles. Um, triangles are great, and if that's what you do, then more power to you. But I find that having curved lines rather than straight lines means that I can fine-tune my colors a little bit more than just having squares. So obviously, in this case, it will be from orange to a really, really pale yellow. And so... Um, I'll have a little bit of orange because I don't want the orange to be too overpowering and then it will slowly change from one yellow into um, so it will start with this darker yellow and then slowly go lighter and lighter and then the last bit is just um, pearl which is a really off-white color so but by the time we get to um, this yellow here there's no more orange in the blend so it's a lot um, it it's just yellow from here on until you start introducing some of the white which would then make it a bit paler towards this side Of course you can do this without making a blend, it's entirely up to you, you could just use, you know, yellow clay. Um, same with the roses, you could just use a solid colour. Um, and you'll still have a beautiful result. But I love colours, I love mixing colours. And I really don't mind making Skinner blends, I know a lot of people hate it. I don't mind it at all.
making progress. Okay, okay. 
that's done. That must have been so boring to watch, sorry. So again, always folding it in the same direction and never from left to right, always from top to bottom. So I want orange to be on the side and white to be on the side. I never want the orange and the white to touch. So with these templates, um, they are 9 by 11 centimeters, um, which I find is just the perfect size for um, my blends. But of course you can make it whatever size you want as long as it fits in your pasta machine. So now I'm going to run this through my pasta machine, folded edge in first so that if there's any air trapped in here it will get pushed out through the top. And I'm just going to run this through the pasta machine, same as with the blue one, over and over until the colours are blended nicely. So you can already see the blend beginning to happen. The orange and the yellow mixing here. And then the, oh, if I can get the sheen out of the way. The um, yellow and the pearl mixing over here. Now the, um, the blend is a bit more pronounced, so there's um, more orange mixed in with the yellow here and the white is almost completely being mixed in with the yellow on the edge. So I, you can stop at any point and it's entirely up to you. Personally, I like to um, I don't like to have that streaky effect, so I keep running it through the pasta machine until all of the clay is blended. So the idea here is to create a cane um, for a single petal from the sunflower, and then instead of um, cutting out circles for the petal and shaping them will actually shape the cane into a petal shape and just take slices of that to build the flower. The beauty with using a blend for um, petals is you don't have to um, after the fact put on any sort of um, surface treatments like a um, chalk pastel or acrylic paint or anything really it's all the colors are already there which of course means that um, they won't get rubbed off or fade or whatever without the whole thing fading <laughs> So that's pretty well blended, um, starting with the dark edge and going all the way to the really pale one.
I wasn't actually counting, so I didn't count how many times that went through the pasta machine, but until it's blended, basically, is my go-to response for that. So Now what I'm going to do, I want to thin this out, but instead of thinning it out um, this way, the way we did with the first blend, I want to thin it out lengthwise. So instead of putting it into the pasta machine this way, I'm actually going to put it in this way. And this is the only time you do it when you want to um, lengthen it. So, there we go. Fold this in half. A bit wide. And I'm going to put it, I want it even longer and thinner. It's a bit thick to build a cane with. I'm going to put it on a thinner setting on the pasta machine. Yes, so now I've got a really long, thin bit. But it's still, like I said, with um, reducing the thickness of any sheet of clay, you want to do it gradually. So you don't want to start with the thicker setting and then go straight down to the thinnest one because that's how you get the rippling and mess, basically. Um, so I started off on setting one, then three, then six, and now I'll go to nine, which is my thinnest. But all pasta machines are different, so you need to um, play with the settings to find how yours handles what. Or you could just wing it. Phew, we're so living dangerously. Oh no. All stuck together. Okay, so as you can see, I have now got a really long, sticky thin ribbon of my blend. So I'm going to do a fan fold, which basically is exactly what it sounds. I'm going to fold this up like it's a fan. Um, from starting with the one end to the other end. Sometimes I wish I had an extra hand. If it does tear like mine just did, don't panic. It is okay. Just remember which parts tore off from where and just in the fan fold, just stick it back together. No one will know. Straighten off this edge. And now I'm just going to fold it into a fan fold. Go that way. And then back this way. Over and over again till we get to the end. Again, if my explanation is lacking or if I'm not explaining something so that you can understand it or even if you just have a question, please feel free to ask it in the chat or send me a message and I will, I will answer it for you. I mean, if I can. 
I don't actually know everything, I just pretend to. Okay, for this we'll also need, um, because a, sen a sunflower has a fairly large um, inside bit, I don't know the technical or the scientific term for it. <laughs> the circle. <laughs> um, I actually have a blend for that as well, but I won't put you through the uh, trauma of watching me create another one. I'll actually just use um, some of the one that I already have on hand, but it's basically uh, uh, brown blend. So it starts off fairly almost black and ends in a lovely um, mud color. with the um the blend for the inside bit instead of doing a fan fold i did a bullseye which means that instead of folding it like this i rolled it up from uh, the light end to or from the dark end to the light end in this case don't want all of this orange on this particular one so I'm just going to chop it off. Okay that's what we have a little stack of oh, I'm just going to blend. Okay so I'm just squishing this down making sure there's no air in it anyway and that it's the same with the top as it is at the bottom. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm going to put some little streaks in this petal. So you can either use um, your blade. I use my library card because why not? Um, all you have to do is use this as a credit card. Um, so I just use it to cut through the clay and because it's quite thick it drags some of the colour from the top down into the bottom. So I'll turn it this way so you can see. Okay. 
So I'm going to put about four or five cuts in. Okay. So as you can see, there is some of the, the yellow clay that's been pulled all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to stick this back together. And then I'm actually going to flip it over so that orange is on top. And you can see the um, cut lines here. So in between those, I'm going to put a cut from the orange side to the yellow side. So again. doesn't look like much now but I promise you it will be pretty and now I'm just gonna squish it up this way and elongate it because um, so we want to see the lines from all sides of the cane so if I elongate it this way then the lines were all for naught whereas if I elongate it this way then these lines that we just put in will be stretched and we can see it from all the different slices or through all the different slices. I'm um, squashing and stretching at the same time. Okay. Um, you don't want to make the corners too sharp because this is a flower petal, so you know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to round out the corners, but if I was just, let me just, if I was just to pinch these corners together, then I would have a curved orange bit in the middle, which is not what I want for this particular cane. So I'm actually going to push it in this way and then this way. So that instead of curving inwards up here, it's actually curving out. So I'm just going to squish it all the way along the cane. And then this way. So I want the orange to be on the top. Or the bottom, whatever. And the pale yellow to be on the other side. And I'm just shaping this into a rough sort of teardroppy petal shape a leaf shape whatever you want to call it this doesn't because we're not um, actually building a cane we this is the cane that we're building you don't have to be too um, worried about having consistent size from one end to the other so like um, these fingerprints and dents here usually you'd want to um, minimize those when you're building a, a flower cane for example but in this particular case it doesn't matter okay so let me find the little brown bit
so prepared. Okay, here it is. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but it's um, black on the inside and uh, like a dark chocolate brown on the outside. This has been sitting for a while, so it's quite hard, so I'm just trying to get it a bit more malleable. Okay, so again, I'm going to grab a bit of scrap clay. Okay, so this is what I'm going to build my flower on. It's just, it just doesn't matter what color it is. You can, any color will do. This is just lying on my table. So, so I'm just making a little, um, like a cabochon, a little um, disc with a bit of a curved edge on it. almost like a button and then I'm going to take a slice of this inside one. Oh, this has really gone hard hmm. I recently traveled with this I think it might be a goner Plain brown clay it is. Yeah. Luckily I never pack anything away. There's like a thousand things on my desk. So I'm just going to cover this um, this little button here. a thin bit of my inside color There's the inside bit for now. Okay, now I'm going to grab some slices from the cane. Okay, depending on what you want to do with this, um, with the cane I mean, if you want to make something like this, that the petals are poking out or something like this that has nothing it's just the flower um, you want to cut your slices quite thick because it needs structural integrity when it's um, baked so that it doesn't snap you know when you look at it whereas if you're making something like this which is on a backing so that the um, flowers are you know they're not um, the petals don't need to be really thick, they don't need to be very strong. You can just cut the slices really, really thin. So just be mindful of that when you decide what you want to do. Okay. I hope you can see that. Um, it's got some lovely stripes through the, um, through the yellow there. So 
I'm cutting these slices about two or three millimeters thick which doesn't sound like a lot but in terms of clay it's quite a bit okay. so now all I'm doing is I'm shaping the petal I'm pinching it a little bit here and I'm flattening it out and pinching the very top to get my petal shape and this one I'm also curving just to give it a bit of realism for a second and I'm going to do the same with all the rest of them too it is a good idea as well to just soften up the edges because they're quite sharp from having been cut um, and you know flower petals don't have hard edges on them so again pinching here pinching here flattening it out giving it a bit of a curve. I'm actually just going to make enough to go all the way around this circle. Pinchy, pinchy. This is why I like Primo Clay, because with Kato this is impossible, because Kato just does not like me. It doesn't do what I tell it to. Um, whereas Primo is a bit more forgiving, it doesn't fight me as much. Um, again, when you're making something that you want it, if you want it to look more realistic, it's a good idea to um look up images or actually have you know the reason i started making them is because someone gave me a bouquet of sunflowers and they just made me so happy and i knew that they were going to die so i needed to recreate them So sunflowers don't actually have very sharp petals, they're quite rounded, more like this, but I find that it looks more like a daisy, so if I give them the, um, the sharper petals, to me it looks more like a sunflower, so. which is why I suggest um, looking at actual photos of whatever you're trying to create or looking at the actual thing proper um, just to help you uh, try and capture that So again, one cane is not going to just make one flower you can make. In fact, all of the sunflowers that I have here and then some were made um, with a single cane and I actually still have some of that one left. So, you know, you can make a fair few projects with just the one, just the one cane.
Okay, now for the fun part. There, um, this obviously does not look like a very realistic representation of a sunflower. Um, so we just need to texture the leaves a little bit, which would immediately add um, a sense of realism to this. I think I'm petal short. Um, so for texturing, you can use whatever you have on hand, whatever works for you. Um, it depends on what mood I am, what I use. So I sometimes use my um, ball styluses. I sometimes use um, a ruler. I sometimes just use my fingers. I um, often will use a little um, needle tool or an awl. So just find what works for you and use that. Today I'm going to go for this. So this is the little needle tool. Um, it's basically a metal toothpick, which, you know, a toothpick is also great to use. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sharp tip towards the center of the petal and I'm going to make an indent pretty much like that in the middle of each of the petals, Just pushing the very tip of it into the center there. that looking a bit funny at the moment but I promise it won't look funny for long. So I'm just curling these um I might actually just put this on a little tile. I'm just curling the petals upwards so that they don't you know just lie flat and look boring. These are just the bottom petals and most of these will actually, most of the bulk of these will be hidden by the next um, layer of petals that goes over the top of this. So don't stress too much if they're not um, perfect. As you can see, they're not even all exactly the same because um, sunflowers or flowers in general, they're not 100% perfect. I mean, if that's what you want to make, then knock yourself out. But Okay, and I'm just going to repeat that process, but I'm going to put the next row of petals in between where these ones are. 
so squish these petals again pinchy pinchy Of course you can make this bigger or smaller, you can make the center bigger, you can make the petals bigger, you can, you know, it's um, whatever you want. those of you who watched last night um, those circular mica shift pendants that I um, painstakingly made my dog decided to hop up on my table and walk across them so <laughs> I've had to squish them so I'm gonna have to remake those that's what happens when you have no rules done here.
Okay. I'm just going to repeat my little whole process. Sun petals have a lot. Sun petals, sunflowers have a lot of petals. So, if you um, if you want to keep going and keep adding more and more petals until you're satisfied with it, do please go ahead. But I am quite happy with this one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put some. A little veins on my petals just with um, a ball stylus and I'm really just very lightly scouring the surface and little lines if you didn't want to use a Skinner blend and you just wanted to um, you know use a solid yellow color Course, that's absolutely fine but now would be the time to if you were so inclined add um, surface treatments so like if you wanted to put pastels or um, mica powders or whatever now's a good time to do that okay so there's that now obviously the center of this is looking ridiculous so I'm just going to grab some more of this brown clay. Um, I'm actually just going to roll out another ball. Flatten it again. I'm just going to place it over the top like this but I'll actually um, I'll use my awl to just roll these edges um, sort of in and under so that it um, creates that domed shape again because I mean, it just looks like someone dropped a flat circle in there Want to curl these edges in a fraction. Okay. Might actually have to put something in the bottom. Another tool I quite often use is this little um, I don't know what it is, it's for your nails I think. Um, I don't even actually know where it came from either so it's just something that I had lying around I'm like oh that would be cool. So it's got a, I think this is to move your cuticles, so it's got a curved shape here which would work great for curving in those little 
round bits. Now it's just a matter of shaping and there's a lovely little sunflower. If you wanted to texture this inside bit here. Um, a toothbrush would do the trick or even um, this I have it's a pottery tool it's just a little um, wire brush on a stick basically and I'm just going to poke this Just the bottom bit is a bit thick for my liking, so I'm just slicing some of that off. The first, because that normally is not the case, I normally have to add more. And that's it, that's a little sunflower. So now I would probably add. Um, one or two really small petals just in between here where I feel like there's a bit of a gap and that really is all there is to it if you make it smaller obviously it's a lot easier you don't have so much clay to worry about it um, moving somewhere you don't want it to or whatever um, that's it that's all there is to it I hope you enjoyed um, or found some inspiration in at least some of what we what I did here today and hopefully I will see you back here again tomorrow same time um, for day four of the two-week challenge Makume Gan or however you want to pronounce that it's a Japanese metal working technique that's been adapted to polymer clay which is really fun to do and it's quite cool so hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. If not, I'll see you next time. Bye.